Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 with another Group A rally build with the rally car, the Notch 037, my personal favorite rally car ever made. It's also fully built because my original capture didn't save. Very annoying. But this isn't just any build, because we're going to do things a little different. We're going to see what is faster, going forwards up the road in the, in the way we've always run it, or running the course in the opposite direction. It's the same length, they're both rivals events. So which one is actually going to be faster? And I figure a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, semi-slick tires with 321 horsepower, something like that, should be pretty good. Yeah, 321 horsepower, 233 torque, less than 2200 pounds, and mid-engine with massive rear tires. This is a pretty good build, in, in principle. It's pretty solid. We haven't had a mid-engine car run up here since the MR2, and this makes a pretty similar horsepower figure, but I think it's even better handling. I love how the 037 drives. But we're going to see just which direction is faster. I'll show you what I mean, and then we'll cut to the, uh, to the runs themselves. But because it's a rivals event, there are two different ways to run it. Fan shut off, fan shut off. God damn it. There's this, the narrows, which is what we've been using. But there's also this. Same route, just a different direction. So I did the traditional runs first. I'm not going to include all of them. I'm going to include a split screen between the fastest run from the backwards and the fastest run from the forwards. Turns out, when you bring a purpose-built rally car to a rally stage, it's really good. As in, it did a sub-240 and beat the Tirana. So, this vehicle's new target time is not the Holden Tirana, which did a 240.2. It is itself, which did a 239.9. It, and what's crazier about that 239 run is that I missed my braking zone a few times. I, I was really pushing it. And I missed my braking zone once on the hair, on the entrance of the canyon, that jump into the left-hander. And I missed my braking zone on the 90-degree left heading on the straightaway, which was a really bad place to miss your braking zone because it meant I could carry no momentum. And yet... The Tirana was just not good enough around the final corner, and I was able to sneak a win by three-tenths of a second. So it can probably go half a second faster than the Tirana, easily. But I buggered up two of the corners, one of them being very important, and it still won. So this is a seriously quick car. Saying that, I don't have as much experience with this course. All right, I did some practice, and you see it there, I did some practice with the Tirana, just to try and get my bearings a little bit, and I got decent, I did a few runs for like an hour or two, but I don't have the same experience as I do on the normal layout, because I've done, what, 20-something episodes of it now, and this will be, wait, run number 12, or whatever, on this run, on this route. Yep. Yep. I will say, this vehicle gets quite a lot of understeer if you're not used to it. Because it only has two, four, five tires on the front, it means you have to be really patient with the front. And it can turn in, but it doesn't turn in like the Tirana. It's not as aggressive. You have to be gentle. You have to be Italian, smooth. You have to be a smooth operator. Because uh, it's... Oh, I accidentally double shifted. So it's, it's weird going this direction because not only are the corners completely different and very nasty because you have a lot of uphill braking zones in the hairpins, you also have huge jumps. I'm glad I didn't run this direction for the normal run, for the normal build series. There's the understeer. But you just, the number of jumps on this course is insane and the height of them is even more insane. I think I need to do a late apex on that hairpin, by the way. I think that's the best way to go about it, is a later apex. You don't want to cut the corner, because it will push you out wide. Like, look at the size of these jumps. Then you gotta jump into here, which just causes you to drift all over the place, and that really hurts your lap time. Now, you can take that section almost flat out. 
but you have to be really precise with your line and you have to make sure to break early so when you get air time over the crest you still have time to land it before you have to hit your brakes really bloody hard. So yeah it's it's a technical course, it's a nasty course, it's probably nastier than the normal course just because the jumps are so huge. I would actually probably prefer rally suspension on this course just to help it settle it more on the landings so I can be more aggressive on them. As it stands, we have to be a little gentle, be a little careful, both with the car and with the jumps, because we're on racing suspension, and we have tiny two, four, or five tires up front, so we can't overwork them. We gotta be delicate and gotta be smooth. So we don't really have a target time per se, and I'd like to beat the Toronto again, that would be nice. But otherwise, we're going to probably beat the Lancia because the Tirana beat the Lancia's time on this stage. So it should, in theory, the Lancia should be able to go faster. Attempt number two going the wrong way. We did a 244 because I mucked up a few times. It was a bad run, a very bad run. And we're going to have a disadvantage compared to normal. You see, we don't have the same acceleration. The acceleration of this vehicle is woeful. Look at the Toronto running off into the distance with this 400 horsepower versus this 300. And you, you just don't have the acceleration, which really hurts it on this straightaway, because we, we go from a standing start, and it just kills us on the opening. But then, we should come alive later on in the run. Uh, that was a little close to the wall. Yeah, you, you could kind of run wide on the normal run in that area going the other way because otherwise you just go into the grass a bit you can't run wide there because you will just die and fall off the bridge which would hamper your time Ooh, a little bit of oversteer it's not 315 tires on the back but it's still you know it's still a little mid-engine rear-wheel drive 300 horsepower rally car almost a corner cut so it does get a bit oversteer if you really push it. And in some cases that might actually help because the front end doesn't turn in as much as you probably think it would. But again, it just doesn't have the same tires as the other vehicles. There we go, that's a little better to do there. I was a little greedy on the power so it pushed me wide. But a late apex is the solution there. It keeps you from getting shoved out too wide. Huge dump time. And then... Cut in. Perfect. Well, oh, I need to break though, because that's way too fast into there. Nicely done. I, I'm actually getting pretty good at that jump into the braking zone. It's similar to the jump into the hairpin, but it's a little faster and you have a little bit less time to break. The difference, though, is the transition, the landing ramp, if you will, is far nicer on that one. So there is that going for it, but it's still a really nasty section. I'm um, not confident in that. It's, that's a nasty corner going the other way. I think it might actually be nastier going backwards because you don't have the same, the, the apex is the other way around. So it gets wider, no, it gets tighter, sorry, it gets tighter as you go into it. And the car just runs out of grip. It works going the other way because, for this vehicle specifically, because the corner gets looser, gets more open as I go through it. But with this thing and the lack of front end grip it has, it really doesn't like those corners. And our 244, we're not really going very fast here. We're right at the bottom of the table, actually, <laughs> near enough. We're, we're almost on the same pace as the Auto Union. That would be interesting, <laughs> having the launch show win it, followed by just an awful run because i know the Toronto's quick but the Toronto's is also completely different build philosophy to the lancia okay do or die time with the lancia uh it may be leading our table but it's about to be really far down the order if i don't get this thing sorted out turns out uh running in reverse with this car at least is atrocious and i don't understand why because the Toronto is really fast I mean, our target time with my Tirana right there is a 2.39 done as fast as the Lancia's time going forwards. But for whatever reason, the Lancia 
is just slow. It's very slow, and I don't understand why. It, maybe it's because it's not a power build, and maybe this layout, this route, favors acceleration a little bit more? I don't know. What I do know is we need to pull off a miracle here if we're going to get a good time. Because we're in the 244s right now. And that's about the same pace as the Auto Union. The Auto Union was a very bad car. And the Lancho is a very good car. I mean, this race, if this doesn't improve, we're going to need two separate tables on screen. Because the gap between the cars is so severe. And I ran in a little deep there. I was trying to carry speed, but it just pushed wide. That was a good section through there. Now, brake late. 103 into that corner is a little scary. Now get on the power. We didn't get pushed wide. We didn't get oversteer. That is how we do it. Okay. We're closer. We're close, so we're not going to beat it. It's just way off in the distance. Break early here. Just to carry the speed and flat out through here. Yes. We're a little locking up under brakes, but we carry the speed. I'm in the wrong here. Almost completely mucked that up. Not great for momentum, but it still carried it through the corner. I didn't realize I was in third. I was supposed to be in second. Oops. Nice. Okay. It's a little tricky, it's a little finicky, it's a lot more finicky on this route, this layout, as opposed to the traditional. But you can get this car around the course cleanly. It's a handful, and it, I really dislike the understeer on this vehicle. I wish it had like two 7.5s up front instead of two 4.5s. But what are you going to do? I don't make the rules of how Forza modifies these cars, and I think there is a real-world reason for it. I always think that corner is tighter than it is. I could carry more speed, but I just ain't brave enough. It's going to be considerably faster, a second faster, 243-1. Still not great. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird one. So, um, the launch is both first and, like, 12th. <laughs> That is strange. Running it in the opposite direction is power oriented. And it really just goes to show how good the Tirana is. Because the Tirana is good in both directions. It did a 239.0 in reverse. And it did a 240.2 going forward. So it's a very consistent vehicle. It has horsepower. It has the lightweight. It has the handling. The Lancia is just better handling. It's just better through the corners. And even though it loses quite a bit of time on the straightaway, it's still a solid vehicle at the end of the day. And it's just good enough to edge out the Tirana. So I shall leave you with a, com a split screen between the fastest run forwards and the fastest run backwards. And I'll be back with more.